here we are with the third episode of Front and Center, and we have a little bit of a change up today. We are actually live on Instagram, just so that uh, people can tune in, maybe ask some questions, but just wanted to change it up. But like always, behind the camera, behind the mic, in front of me, we got Michael the Beard Kaposi. How you doing today, Mike? I'm, I'm good. I'm doing. a little stressed. <laughs> If you if you guys can't see it, but Michael is literally surrounded by <laughs> by wires. I and, wish and we, phones and lights. I would say use your phone to take a picture, but we can't even do that because you're going live. <laughs> but um, we have a very interesting topic right now. I think it's probably the most mainstream topic that is all over the internet. Um, hasn't really been publicized, I think, on television yet. But we're going to talk about the metaverse. And for those that don't know what the metaverse is, look, this is all speculation. Michael and I are no way, you know, experts on any of this. It's just what we've seen on social media and been reading on the internet. And me personally, I didn't learn, I didn't dive into it until I saw the Gary V. Mark Zuckerberg interview. And where Gary was asking Mark um, questions about, you know, what his plans are and with, you know, integrating social media and all these different things. But the metaverse, right? It's, I guess, this online 3D virtual environments. I'm reading this right off of the internet yeah. because I'm not positive. In what I think the best way to describe it is it's like Minecraft. Or Roblox, yep. I think there's like the easiest analogy people will know. It's like Minecraft where like you log in, you pick a server, and you go do what you got to do. Yeah. I, I agree with you, but there's also like all these talks about Decentraland and Sandbox and someone r recently got married on the metaverse through a virtual, it seems like they got married through some virtual thing called Verbella. Was it a real marriage or was it like two so they had a lot so they got, avatar, avatars? So they got married live, like actual had a, like a wedding. Two real people. Real, two real, yes, two real people. Okay. And then they had a virtual wedding at the same time through this platform called Verbella, a company that builds virtual environments for work, learning, and events. So it's basically like the new live stream in a way because, I mean, think about it. how many people had Zoom weddings. Well, they had to. Well, they the had pandemic. to. Yeah, but like it's kind of like that. But I guess so. Like it's just it's just. I just don't know. So, like I mentioned earlier, this is all speculation, and we're trying to figure out. I guess this conversation is like, what is going to result in the introduction of metaverse and it becoming more mainstream? Now, I personally think, and this is something I've mentioned to both Tony and Michael and other people I've talked about the metaverse is that whatever Zuckerberg and I guess Meta, no longer Facebook, launch, they'll end up being like the mainstream metaverse in a way. I think personally, just because of their budget and being the brand and you know who Mark Zuckerberg is. So- They have an active user base. Yes. I mean, well, how, yes. how many billions of users do they have? Through Instagram and Facebook. Exactly. And he plans on like, based on his interview, he wants to sometime, some, in some way integrate social media to this metaverse with augmented reality and all these different things. I have, I, it's like, you know, you know what this reminds me of? Have you, have you ever seen the office? Yes. Remember Ryan, how he had Wolf? Uh, I don't remember the episode. So he, he created a social media platform where it's like, you get notified by every possible device that you are like getting followed. Like in a way, like, <laughs> like if someone followed you, you would get a fax, a beeper, a, an email, <laughs> Like you would get like every single way you'd be notified. I think that's like what Zuckerberg's trying to do. Yeah, I, I he's trying no, to condense it all. I maybe just like bring everything into one. I, I think it's also pretty cool because it's opening up for like digital artists, as we're seeing with mm -hmm. the NFT space, mm -hmm. and you know these new and like companies now are getting involved. So like one of the headlines right now on a website called Ad Age. Um, Ralph Lauren is launching or has launched a winter, a winter uh, line of clothing, but where people can like ice skate and ski and these different things like that. And it's going till January 3rd. So that's a collaboration that they've done with Roblox. And I think, you know, we just, we talked that right. possibly on the last one or one before that, or maybe on, you know, something. outside something 
that you know Chipotle did something with Roblox where they were giving away a million dollars worth of burritos. Right. And if you signed on and you were one of the first million people, you able you were able to claim your burrito, your free burrito, you free which then burrito. Yeah. yeah translated to real life. So it's really interesting to see now like a company like a Ralph Lauren getting involved in the gaming community of Roblox is Roblox is a younger audience. I only hear like children playing that. Yeah. Like I, I like in the gamer scene, I feel like Minecraft is like universally accepted. Like anyone mm-hmm. can play it. Yeah. I feel like Roblox is like the younger generation. Yeah. Like, I, like, I, like, like 18 and younger. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. It's just interesting to see though. I guess this is my speculation. This is my opinion, right? No way is this fact. Um, you know, so people watching on IG live, like I'm not, you know, I don't have any inside scoop. Yeah. We know a lot of people in different industries and networks, but not this one in particular. Um, I do think it's going to change how brands strategize mm-hmm. uh, going forward for their marketing. I think now you're seeing companies have another opportunity and the ones that are going to be early are going to be the most successful, right? I'm not like you have Ra- Ralph Lauren, very well known worldwide brand. Next thing you're going to see is a Nike, right? Mm-hmm. Adidas. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this off camera now has done uh what how did you explain it it was they, they collaborated of, with board ape okay for, to get into like nfts or the metaverse or something of that sort in essence they're introducing like i guess clothing for the metaverse don't quote okay. me on this but they're, they're they're introducing clothing into the metaverse through board ape so i okay. guess like if you own a board ape if you're one of like those few people that can own one mm-hmm your bored ape can enter the metaverse wearing Adidas clothing and not okay. what it has on its actual artwork. Okay. So it's like taking the artwork and putting more layers onto it. That's interesting. It, it just it's really interesting because like no one I don't know I don't know if anyone really has a full grasp on the power that this metaverse is gonna have. Do, do you think it's power or like I guess like the question do you think the metaverse is going to be another social media platform or a, an actual different environment, like like a reality? Because it's going for like augmented virtual reality, right? So it, that's a great question. I think that it's going to be, based on what I've seen, and just going back to the Gary V. Mark Zuckerberg interview, Mark really wants to integrate everything into one. Right. So like social media is going to play a big part into this metaverse. Um, where he wants to connect people like they've never been connected before. So if you're not actually with somebody, you can be with somebody in one way or another. It's like an extra layer on the digital communication. Exactly. Now it turns into like digital physical communication. Yes. Now my next thing though is, which is really interesting, and we were talking about this off camera as well, is that the job opportunities that this metaverse is going to give, right? So, yeah. yes, you have real life jobs, you know, going a lawyer, doctor, um, you know, developers. garbage man, um, you know, whatever it may be. But now the metaverse is going to create some type of job opportunity for people that maybe don't want to work a job in real, in life. real life, but they can work on the metaverse and be paid whatever currency right. so mana for example m a n a through is, decentraland do, yeah is one of the currencies for decentraland like right. you could be paid in mana and then based on what mana is to the dollar you can convert and then you have real life money or but you, your job requires you to be in front of a computer all day or, doing something or you just keep the mana and spend it in the metaverse in essence, detaching yourselves from reality. Yeah, but then you got to eat, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you have to eat food. Like, you can't just, like... I'm sure you'll be eating that burrito in the metaverse. Yeah, the, so <laughs> that's another thing. Yeah, the Mark Zuckerberg says, whatever you eat in the metaverse will actually translate to real life. So eat that burrito, you're going to taste it in real life. Um, and it's give you the nutritional value of it. <laughs> Not actually going to happen. Oh, my God. That would be actually incredible. Imagine that. That'd be kind of scary. I, 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 it's very... Meta, <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. But it just, it's just overall, it's really interesting to see what's going to happen. I personally think that brands that are early, gonna, like I mentioned, are going to jump on and start making civ- like serious waves, and other people are going to follow. Right? I think that the metaverse is going to create 
a whole new opportunity for businesses, for individuals, for brands, and so on and so forth. Like there might be people, you know, that don't really have a brand built in real life, you mm -hmm. know, but in the metaverse, they're very well known. And they, you know, become somewhat of a celebrity figure in the metaverse. Like, could you become a known celebrity musician or I mean, actor in the it, metaverse? Like, are there going to be movies in the metaverse? Like, I mean, there might be movies, like, based on the metaverse. But, like, I guess, like, your analogy you're making is they're social media influencers and they're celebrities. Yes. These social media influencers are only really known for their social media presence, not really for their celebrity work or whether it be. But these social media influencers <laughs> are becoming that of. But they got in a different way. Yes. So but nowadays, there's so many ways to become famous and known that just being a, an actor on television or movies right. is not the only route anymore. So I guess now you just add another way to get into being famous. Yeah. So now, like, we talked about this. I can't recall if it was on the podcast. I don't think it was. But we talked about how the weekend has yep. been one of the first to really jump into this whole metaverse NFT space. He's been really big in the NFT space. Um, I mean, he's been selling music. It's not necessarily singles or like like his final produced like album music, mm -hmm. but he's selling like bits and pieces of like loops, maybe some like demos, maybe like just like raw like um, beats. Okay. But he's partnered with people to sell that stuff, you know, like where it's his stuff. But it's weird because what value does that hold or what does that give you tangibly other than just like an audio file that you could have bought? I guess. I mean, yeah. yeah, but I, I it, think it's so weird to like think about it. No, it is. If you really try to wrap your head around it, a lot of this doesn't make sense, but eventually will make sense. It's like when the internet first came out, like no one was like, oh, this is a fad. It's not going to work. But now it's like so <laughs> it's it's so important well, to everyone. I, I guess it's like a great thing to bring up because it's like when the internet was around, everyone was like, this is the land of so many possibilities. Yeah. But it wasn't built yet. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a Facebook. There wasn't a MySpace. There wasn't a Twitter. Yeah. Like people have to build it to sh explore the possibilities. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of where we are present day with like this metaverse because like there's the central land, there's sandbox, there's whatever Facebook's building. Yeah. It exists. The, the foundation and I guess the infrastructure hasn't been put in place so that people can see the value. It's, yeah, it's still being figured out. It's all snake oil. But if you think about, I was just thinking about this when I brought up musicians is that I remember in Fortnite, they were having like concerts within Fortnite, I think with Travis Scott and Drake. Travis Scott had one, like virtual concerts. Yeah, right? virtual concerts. But like, yeah. is that going to become where, you know, you can become a known artist in this metaverse and have your own concerts and sell tickets for whatever currency like it's it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens like could you become a very well-known metaverse artist but in real life it doesn't correlate like like you never hold, host like a real life show it's yeah just metaverse concerts you'll never go like tour the yeah. united states or like international or like does that even you know because artists might change like you could completely rebrand yourself it's you a know? whole new world. Yeah, it's a whole new world. Like, whatever you are in real life, you could completely rebrand yourself for the metaverse and become known as something else. Like, imagine the three, you, me, and Tony, becoming known musicians. <laughs> well, what's going to be your brand in the metaverse? I I don't know. That's something that has to be right? figured out, right? It's But I think knowing the three of us, as soon as something like this launches, I know we're going to dive into it mm -hmm. and, you know, have to learn as much as we can about it so that we can incorporate it into our own brand <clears throat> but also for, you know, clientele that we meet because as of recent, we've had so many people reaching out about what's an NFT. How do we implement an NFT? Right. So I think there's going to be a lot of changes. And I guess my, my piece of advice to people listening or watching, I don't know if there's any questions on the IG live. Um, but it's like, if you're not getting involved in this, you should start to, and start reading about it and do your own research and f go on Twitter, whether it's Insta or Instagram, and just try to learn about what's happening in the digital space because it could impact the industry that you're in. Yeah. And I want to go back real quick before, you know, we close up this episode is that, you know, there's a, there's, there's the first real estate group on the metaverse. Yeah. And you brought up a good point. It's like now, 
are they going to show land virtually or like, are they going to negotiate for people? Yeah. Like if you and I go on, <clears throat> excuse me, go on to the metaverse and there's a plot of land that we want to buy. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's say it costs just easy numbers called uh, 10 Ethereum. Right. And we're interested, but do we have to go to a real estate group to then negotiate for that land like oh we want to buy this but we want to we don't want to pay 10 ethereum we think it's worth 8.5 ethereum it's just but now are like there new, comps like, broker yeah like are there comps so the is there an inspection make royalty? is there royalties on uh, it's so weird to think is about. there an inspection is there an appraisal like what happens you know so i think there's so much that we don't know and we're going to continuously find out but there's no denying that brands and businesses that have the money and have the influence are going to start jumping on here. I don't think Ralph Lauren is the like the last, the, the last to. company to do it. You're yeah. going to start seeing more and more companies, Coca-Cola, a Pepsi, a you know Nike, Adidas is starting it, and Under Armour. Like, are you going to have metaverse? At, like, there's so much we could talk about. Like, is there going to be a metaverse athlete? Like, can you have an athletic? Like little a little figure, <laughs> you know, like little, like an esports team in the metaverse. Well, that that was something I read about today. Right, there is going to be esports. Like someone, they had. Oh my god, it was like they held like their first ever virtual reality esport tournament, where like the guys were like in full blown virtual stuff, like holding whatever it is like that the controllers like, controllers that makes the form of the gun right and they were playing and reloading real life and walking on this platform and playing a tournament it's interesting so it's like are you now going to be able to do like i i think as you know someone that games and someone that's been a gamer for a long time and i know you have also yeah. is that i know for a fact i've always talked about imagine how cool it would be to be able to like dive in and play call of duty virtually but like your movement is how your character moves. It's like Ready Player One. Like the way you shoot, the, yeah, the way you shoot, the way you punch, kick, all this stuff, throw people, whatever it is. Like, Everything's determined on every, your personal yeah. attributes. And I think we're closer than we think to that. I think so too. Which would be really interesting. Like you're in the game. Yeah. It's no longer outside. Like you're actually in it, you feel it, and you control what actually happens. Right. So. There's going to be so many different things, I think, over the next 10 to 15 years that occur. We'll be already in our 40s probably with, like, kids, but which would, you know, I think we'd probably still have, we'd still be doing what we're doing. So, um, No, I think you're right, though. I think the main thing, though, to take away is to start at least educating yourselves a little bit. Yes. It doesn't detriment you to learn something new of, about something that may possibly be the future. Yeah. It doesn't like, hurt. Because, like, take, like taking five minutes to understand how a metaverse might work. Mm -hmm. It's so much more useful than hoping to God in 15 years when it's actually mainstream, then learning it. Yeah. Don't, you don't want to be last. You don't want to be a lagger. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to lag behind. And also, you know, I guess we'll put it on a more positive and optimistic pl direction is that if you're someone that's doing something in real life you don't enjoy, you might be able to find something in the metaverse that you do enjoy and reinvent yourself and make yep. money doing it. Yep. So... That'd be really cool. You can make money in real life and the metaverse, which all translates back to real life. So yeah. who really knows? But I think, you know, we're going to wrap it up for episode three. For those that tuned in on IG Live, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, you know, so just stay tuned for more episodes of Front and Center. And that is all.